Garrett Dillahunt plays CIA director William Francis Buckley in the limited series Ghosts of Beirut. And he plays Jack in the comedy series Sprung. I'm at Noble Gold Derby. I wanted to start off by asking you, Garrett, but Ghosts of Beirut, what was the most important what do you think the most important thing is about telling that story? Well, I'm not an expert in the story. And it's uh, it's a story that spans many decades. My portion, my small portion, is in sort of Reagan era 80s. Um, and the director, Greg Barker, who's a friend, he directed me in this movie called Sergio some time ago. He's, a, he's very interested and fascinated with politics in the Middle East and those intricate kinds of stories. And uh, th this, in a way, is kind of no country for old men for terrorism, in that this guy, and I'm going to butcher the name, I'm terrible at it, Imad Mugnier, the ghost, the guy who kind of bedeviled CIA and Mossad for decades, and pre-9-11, I believe, had killed more Americans in the Middle East than any other terrorist, but he was, he was in his way, a genius. But he changed the face of terrorism. You know, it was kind of like in How No Country, there was a new kind of criminal that really uh, put us off and we couldn't have imagined before. And this is this was a new kind of terrorist that we hadn't seen, you know, suicide bombers and, you know, just things we couldn't have imagined before, I think, you know. Uh, and I just think it's it's a fascinating, you know, we're still dealing with the ramifications of that today, you know, and, and uh, look, with the America's policies over there, you know, it's, it's really fascinating. And I really like the way Greg told this story. Mm. Um, Didn't really answer your question. Did I? No, 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 it was good. <laughs> um, to, with, with, with William, the character you play, what, like, how would you describe him? Well, he was replacing a very beloved uh, station chief there. Uh, Dermot Moroni played him and, uh, you know, he, he he wasn't from the farm. He wasn't uh, he wasn't trained. He's he's a military man. You know, he was special forces. He was, uh, from what I could gather from the few people I spoke to that knew him. You know, he was he was kind of a blunt instrument. You know, he had, I think, a, a lot of confidence that he was going to go in and straighten this out, find the people that killed our brothers and sisters over there, and we'll put this to bed right away. But you know, he had some weaknesses. You know, he had trouble varying his routine he had trouble you know he, he was overconfident you know and he didn't he didn't know his enemy as well as he should have or or maybe uh, respect them as much as he should have um, but he was by all accounts that i heard like a good guy a solid guy a loyal friend and uh you know a good soldier just maybe not the right tool for this job what was a what was like a character choice you made when portraying him that you thought was helpful? Well, I get real self conscious playing real people. I've I've done it quite a bit. All of a sudden, I realized I started turning them down because you uh you know I, I mean there it seemed like there used to be we'd have months and months of prep time or rehearsal or you know you could interview people and you could really get down to the nitty gritty, but my business now is so, everything happens so fast and it almost feels like you're winging things sometimes, or you're, you know, sometimes I feel underprepared and I, I feel so uh, nervous and especially after talking to people that knew these people that, you know, I'm, that I'm not going to represent them well, that they're going to see and go like, not only does he not look like this guy, but that was nothing like the guy, you know? And so I just try to capture some kind of essence right and f f with him for me it was it was just a real you know he has a line I, you're good at languages well great i don't like languages you know he's he's a he's a very cut and dried kind of you know he's a hammer I've, i always felt like you know and he had a lot of faith in his abilities physically and um i i just tried to embody the spirit of his as much as i could because i knew i don't look too much like him really you know mm. i hope i did a good job we'll see yeah, uh, he he is a man sort of looking for the truth and trying to uncover the, the truth and find answers. Uh, as an actor, I guess you're trying to reveal the truth of a character and a story and all that sort of stuff. What do you do to find truth as an actor? Well, you know, those are tough questions for me. I I I feel like it changes almost every project. You mm. know, um, interesting. 
but often, you know, you're not my therapist or maybe I should have one, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know why I find it so easy to sort of disappear into people. I, I think it's almost a need I have to not be myself or something. So I, I really don't fight it don't fight it much you know it's it's not a big struggle i don't i don't put myself through you know any kind of painful you know stereotypical acting exercises you know to get in a, a headspace i just really try to you know maybe as a failed writer i i hold writing in such high esteem that uh you know i just i, I really want to serve the story and and i think if you come in with that kind mm -hmm. of ego or hopefully egolessness about it you know, it's it's real easy to subvert your own and just give over to the story and let it kind of flow through you. There's, it's nerve wracking in a lot of ways, but there's, it, so far it hasn't, it, it always comes. There's always this kind of in the moment inspiration that happens. And uh, if you're open to it, it just, it can kind of flow through. And hmm. I don't know, that sounds hokey. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, I, I found that interesting. Um, what's, what, what, what's something that was particularly challenging for you in the, as play, in playing this role? Well, the uh, the locations were, you know, it was it was hot in a lot of the places we went and we're in, you know, period suits, you know, several layers. That's another thing he did was he, he, he dressed well. Mm. He was a snappy dresser and didn't come to work without his suit on, you know, hot, cold, snow, rain. I feel like he would always wear the same thing and, mm be punctual he's never late he's chronically early probably and uh uh but i think for me it was it was mainly just the uh but again that works for the character too we've shot this in morocco it's a completely different culture completely different kind of experience you know than i'm used to like like when you go anywhere outside of your own country or your own you know and you just sort of like this is a this is a whole nother place they got a whole nother thing going on and my own sort of discomfort or confusion or uncertainty about things was perfect for mm -hmm. for him, you know? So I guess it's really just trying not to look too sweaty, you know, in these really hot places. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very serious project um, and story. Uh, were there any fun or lighter moments making it or do you have to stay in that pretty serious, important sort of mindset? I don't. I, I find often on the more serious projects, we cling to those moments of sort of, you know, messing around. There were some really good guys on this show. Uh, some actors from England came in, uh, Rafi, uh, Rob Kaczynski, you know, and they just had great senses of humor, you know, while at the same time being incredibly prepared and professional. I, I really enjoy working with actors from over there. And, uh, and a lot of the the local actors and I say local pretty much meaning the entire Middle East because we had actors from Pakistan and Israel and all kinds of places and they were just so committed they were just so it, it was really refreshing to be around the, you know some of them huge stars in their own you know industries over there and it was it was really refreshing and rejuvenating for me as sort of a jaded old fart to see these people just you know young and committed and excited with this they've managed to hold on to that kind of naive enthusiasm we all had when we were starting and it, it, it made us all a little, all, all a little better. So that it was fun to meet them. Uh, one time I was so hot, I was in my trailer and I had stripped down completely and I was going to give myself like a horse bath, you know, before, and I guess they couldn't find me. Uh, and the, the poor young female, uh, trailer ad came running to my trailer and just threw my door open no knock nothing just threw it open trying to make because she didn't know if i was there or not and that she was being told find him find him uh, so that gave me quite a laugh for a few days and a lot of discomfort and just remembering the horror on her face as she backed away um but it was it was a good group it was a good light-hearted group you know oh. I, th I think it's necessary in a lot of ways mm. Now, a much more fun show to watch is Sprung, uh, the comedy series <laughs> that, where you play Jack. Uh, how, I'm glad how, you got to see it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to, like, uh, what was that experience like? I loved it. That was my first uh, foray into producing. You know, I've been coming off some jobs I hadn't enjoyed as much as I'd hoped, and 
I called my buddy Greg Garcia, who I'd worked with a lot before. I at least done two other shows, Raising Hope and Guest Book. And he's just someone that uh, we have the same sense of humor and we just get on really well and no one's fragile. And I said, let's do something. And I said, I don't know what I want to do. This is the kind of guy I want to be. And so Greg wrote those scripts and located all those themes in that story. And uh, uh, and I'm real proud of the result. We, we wanted to do something that would make people feel good, would make them laugh. You know, it, it had been a while, you know, with the shutdown and, you know, COVID. And so uh, uh, I loved I loved that experience. I really did. I could get used to that. <laughs> Was there a particular like uh, moment you uh, enjoyed the most on that show or a scene? Oh or God, it's I mean it's, it's ten episodes of comedy, so it'd be hard to narrow down to just one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have favorite things really, or that changes every day. But uh, look, I love the costumes. You know, we're in seventies clothes, just accidentally. That's the only clothes we could find. I loved how physical it was. I loved the split split screen kind of shooting. You know, when when it's your baby you'll work all day and all night, you know, and it was, it was great to feel that way again. It really was. Mm. Did it, it, like, was there something uh, like, so obviously, you know, your foray into producing, was there anything new as an actor or performer you got to do playing Jack that you hadn't done before? Uh, well, every character is different. Um, I, what I liked about Jack and I thought was hard to do was, you know, in a lot of ways, he's the straight man. You know, so to to find the moments of humor in a comedy, being the straight man and kind of the, you know, a lot of the heart comes from his character and that rediscovery. Um, but I think I think it was great to have a character that was discovering things for the first time. You know, I'd been locked away for the last 26 years and there's been a lot of technological changes that have happened. You know, there were no cell phones. There was no, you know, so half of the fun was jack discovering very common things to us you know and uh just realizing how how good we have it and how unusual some of the things are that we've become so accustomed to mm. I, I, like as an actor are there particular like performances that you're gravitate that you gravitate towards to when you're watching things on tv or film you mean other other people's performances? Yeah, other people's performances. Yeah, what sort of things speak to you or do you really admire? Oh, well, sure. I mean, you know, it's it's always a wonderful thing to see someone. Uh, you know, I had a, here's here's a way in. I, I had a director one time who it was a theater director and he was saying, and it's really stuck with me. He was he was talking about how a lot of the behavior we see exhibited on stage, on film, on TV is actors reproducing what they've seen other actors do as opposed to real life, you know? So, so you're, you're watching an actor reproduce what another actor's interpretation of say grief is, or, you know, or joy, or, and it becomes these sort of stock responses that we all expect, you know, we, we, we all watch TV now and we see someone not blinking and we think, oh, they're trying to cry, you know, because why isn't this guy blinking or, why doesn't this guy shave? He's a lawyer or, you know what I mean? We all notice these things. The audience is pretty sophisticated. So when you see someone then that is just so alive and so uh, uniquely themselves, you know, and you're drawn to that, your eyes drawn to them, you're excited when they come back on screen or on stage, you, you, even unconsciously, you want to, you want to see what they do, you know, and look like Judy Dench is a great example of that or, uh, uh, I love some of Adam Driver's work or, uh, you know, there's, there's so many really wonderful actors out there that just, they're just human. They're just human and uniquely themselves going through those experiences. And it makes it seem like a brand new thing you're watching. And, and I'm drawn to that. And there's, there's a lot of really great work being done out there. I think. Mm. Is there a performance that made you want to act before you started acting that just sort of captivated you? I came to acting pretty late, mm. but I do remember, I remember the original, uh, the Three Musketeers movies with like Michael York and Oliver Reed. And then when I was a kid, I was just like, that would be amazing if to, to do something like that. You know, sword fight and, you know, the humor that was in those. I really liked that kind of stuff. But so, yeah, sometimes I think it's the, uh, it's the odd little ones that, that, you know, tickle your fancy. My girlfriend in high school, we worked for the local movie theaters. And so we could sign in 
and see movies, any movie we wanted, any time. Uh, and I, th I think I didn't know it at the time, but I was laying the groundwork for, you know, <laughs> for a future. I, I never would have guessed this is what I'd be doing. So, but yeah. And what do, what do you love most about doing it? Something that you never thought you'd be doing. What what do yeah, you love? Right? What, where do you get the joy? Where does the joy come from acting? Well, it was a real escape for me. Uh, you know, it was a real. Uh, at the time that this changed, I was going to be a journalist. I, I, th I thought I was a journalism major, and uh, there was some family tragedy that made me want to hide. I think and be somebody else. And uh, I don't think I could have, you know, articulated that at the time, but. I'm sure that's why I'm doing this, you know, and I just would hide in other people and other characters and different worlds, just anybody but myself. That's who I want to be. And, and uh, I still kind of do that. I think I still kind of run. And, um, but I think there's the, there's the crux of it, isn't it? It's, it's a wonderful thing to, if you do it right, to actually stand in somebody else's shoes. And I, I feel like it's really a, um, grown my empathy and my understanding of people that have different viewpoints than my own, you know, and uh, I think that's uh, important in the, in this world that we're living in today to, to be able to do that. So I, that's what I like the most, you know, it, it, it keeps my judgment in check. Mm. You said part of acting was like to avoid it, like to sort of run away a bit. Did you also, do you also find through acting you also, sort of maybe unintentionally find out more things about yourself as well and discover things about you? Oh, sure. I think just like any, you know, you're just going through life, you find out so much about yourself, mm. don't you? And, yeah. you know, I, I, I always liked this, this business. You, you couldn't really rest on your laurels. You know, I, I enjoyed that it was demanding, you know, it, if you win some award or something for the last project and on the next one you stink and everybody knows it, you stink. They don't, you know, there's, there's not a lot of slack that gets cut. And I, I, I appreciated being part of something that demanded uh, excellence from everybody involved. And uh, I like working in groups. I like teams. I like, I like how miraculous it is that anything ever gets made. You know, it's, it's absurd. The hurdles you have to go through to make, to make anything. And when it all comes together, it's just, it's just such a wonderful feeling and a miraculous, and it always seems to come together somehow. Mm. Well, Garrett, uh, thank you so much for talking <laughs> to us today. And speaking of awards, all the best with the upcoming Emmy Awards this year for the Ghosts of Beirut and for yeah. Sprung. So all the best of luck with that. People watching this can go to goldderby.com for our awards coverage. Garrett, thanks so much. Thank you, Matt. It was a real pleasure. Mm -hmm.